Clark County, case number A697302. Good morning. We have the same counsel. Do we have anyone else that needs to be, uh, whose, whose appearances need to be noted? Yes, Your Honor. Deputy District Attorney Lucinda Como on behalf of Stephen Swikert, should he be called to testify as a witness. Very good. Anyone else? Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Danny Heike with Jacob Haffer on behalf of uh, Prince of Prisette's pet shop. All right. Thank you. And good morning, Your Honor. Jim Smythe with Lisa's Astro. Good morning. Uh, this is the time set for the hearing on a motion for preliminary injunction. Um, is it the party's intention to go forward with this uh, hearing then? Or yes, in sir. other words, to put that question another way, I uh, suggested that perhaps the parties could get together since it appeared that uh, the parties <coughs> seemed to be agreed that the uh, dogs in question would be placed in, in homes. It's baffling, Your Honor, but we will need to proceed. Uh -huh. We never even got a single offer to settle, so. That's not right accurate, here. Your Honor. All right. So, so do I glean from that that uh, that had the mechanism been there, that the parties uh, might have been willing to uh, put their heads together and resolve what is best for the puppies? Absolutely. Yes, Your Honor. Absolutely. All right. That's what I thought. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, this is a hearing on a preliminary injunction based upon the pleadings that have been uh, previously submitted to the court, I'm granting the preliminary injunction. I'm granting it solely for a purpose which the court has in mind, which I hope the parties will ultimately agree is the best solution. Uh, in doing so, uh, I may say that one of the issues that, that, that I raised at the past hearing and which was dealt with, uh, well, I didn't raise it, I think the defendants did, and that was the uniqueness, whether the question of whether or not these puppies um, well, I say puppies, I guess the correct thing is there are 25 puppies and two grown dogs, which the press has uh, begun to call the 27 arson puppies. Um, the question was whether or not they could be deemed to be unique. Uh, the parties have submitted authorities on that question. Uh, the authorities uh, are not entirely conclusive on it. We have additionally looked to the Uniform Commercial Code to see if it gives us any insight. It, it does not really resolve the question either. Uh, as to the uniqueness, it does appear that the UCC could deal with um, animals uh, in this fashion or that, that are up for sale. Um, to that extent, they could, have, they could be considered by the UCC and therefore that may be some argument that they cannot be unique. Uh, however, it does appear to the court that at least for the limited purposes for which I'm granting the preliminary injunction, limited in both, uh, well, limited in terms of time, um, that the, the, these particular canines have uh, uh, gained a certain measure of uniqueness, if nothing else, by the fact that this uh, uh, courtroom is now full, including with coverage by the press, over the 27 dogs and the fate of this, uh, these 27 dogs. And indeed, they do seem to have acquired a certain amount of uniqueness for purposes of this litigation. I tried to drop a few subtle hints at the last hearing that it would be best if the parties resolved this out outside <coughs> of the courtroom and specifically without using more public taxpayer resources to resolve this dilemma. Um, that uh, subtlety apparently uh, came to naught. Um, I even, I think, at least gave a, a, a short version of a story of what happened to me in, in practice many years ago when I represented an individual who had gone through a painful divorce uh, and afterward, uh, his uh, home burglar system um, captured the ex-wife uh, entering the premises and dog napping the dog. So representing him, I went to uh, court and appeared before Judge J. Charles Thompson and uh, obtained 
uh, well, actually, I didn't even have to appear. I filed for an ex parte TRO, which uh, was granted. When it came time for the hearing on the preliminary injunction, Judge Thompson said uh, something to the effect that, Mr. Corey, had I really uh, taken the time to uh, review this uh, more thoroughly in the initial instance, I probably wouldn't have granted the TRO. My courtroom is for people, not for dogs. Words to that effect are what Judge Thompson said to me. Perhaps for other reasons, I've come to believe that Judge Thompson was a very wise judge indeed. We are here seated, chewing up taxpayer resources, not even over a question of whether dogs are unique enough to be considered uh, a proper subject matter for a court to uh, use its injunctive relief powers, but simply to resolve who gets to place the dogs. Now, may I suggest to all the parties, in all earnestness, this is not a good expenditure of taxpayer resources. In a city where we have thousands of people, people who are homeless, in a city where we have all kinds of human needs, perhaps we would be better off to expend resources there rather than trying to save, not save dogs, no just trying to decide who gets to place them. That, I suggest to you, is more of an exercise of other considerations than, the, than, simply, what is, than simply a care for the dogs. Whatever is behind the continued animus here, the continued prolongation of these proceedings, I suggest to you is not really simply a consideration of what's best for the dogs. And I say that being a dog lover myself. I have owned any number of dogs. More properly, they have owned me. Uh, I have never encountered the kind of loyalty and undying love um, and simple basic uh, loyalty and love like I have from a dog. Um, so. I'm not here telling you I don't want you to use taxpayer resources because I don't think the dogs are worth it. Quite to the contrary. I think the dogs are the paramount thing here. And I think that the people involved should consider the dogs. Now, it appears that there is a willingness to do so, and I'm going to give you that opportunity. I'm granting the preliminary injunction solely for the time that it may take for the parties to engage in uh, a settlement conference. I want you to uh, use the services which our court uh, has uh, developed as one of the many things that, that the Eighth Judicial District Court does to, that keeps it on the forefront of innovations because we are, as you all know, uh, uh, the district which has, we are told at least, the highest caseload per judge in the country or usually somewhere near the top. And so we're always looking for effective means, alternate means of resolution. Our um, settlement conference program has proven very, very successful. If you will utilize Judge Weiss's uh, good services, you will be able to find a judge in probably very short order who will conduct with you a settlement conference to see if this matter can be resolved. I have further determined that it is in the best interest of the public and taxpayer resources for me to de-incentivize these proceedings and the prolongation of these proceedings as much as possible for the reasons I've already explained. Therefore, any future hearings that we hold on this matter will not involve the use of any press cameras. I, of course, will never tell the press they can't attend such a hearing. But I'm going to try to remove the uh, whatever effect the fact that this has become a big a big uh, matter in the news from the resolution of what's best for these dogs. Uh, so that means also that there is an order that whenever the settlement conference is is set, uh, the parties are not to announce it to the press. Uh, settlement conferences are supposed to be done in private. And I expect this one will be conducted that way. 
that neither the place, time, or who's involved in the settlement conference will uh, be uh, told to anybody outside of the of the parties or necessary people in your um, in your various organizations. Um, and it's not to be something that's uh, that's attended by the press. It's to be a matter done conducted in private where you can consider what's best for the dogs and the parties as well. Um, as I said, I'm granting this preliminary injunction based on a preliminary inquiry into the authorities that have been provided to the court. Uh, if you cannot resolve this in a settlement conference, then we will reset this hearing on preliminary injunction. In any event, uh, because of the unusual nature of the way that I'm doing this, uh, I'm going to say that this preliminary injunction can have no more than 45 days effect. And so I leave it to the parties to reset this matter in front of the court within that time frame uh, after conducting the mandatory settlement conference. And we will then proceed as you would have proceeded today with a hearing based on the evidence. I sincerely hope <clears throat> that this avenue will give the parties the opportunity to resolve the various differences and that we will not have to expend any more taxpayer resources on the matter. Any questions? Yes, Your Honor. Yes? Um, I'm concerned about the dogs being in the shelter for the next 45 days or more. Yeah, it, it's undisputed, I think, from the papers and pleadings that have been filed that my client is the rightful owner of the dogs. Mm -hmm. um, for that reason, my client should be allowed to have his property. I realize that's the ultimate win in this case to some respects, and ordering that would be a bit conclusive at this point. However, there is a section of the Clark County Code, 10.24.10, which says that while a dog is considered part of a legal hold in a case, they may be fostered or held by any organization that's contracted with the shelter. My understanding is a home for spot is contracted with the shelter. I'd like to ask that this court re revisit <coughs> my motion, my uh, emergency motion that I filed with, on request for short in time, the dogs be immediately released, at least for the purposes of solely fostering uh, the dogs mm -hmm. in private households. We have two dogs that we know are sick, very sick. Um, and we have veterinarian care immediately ready to take care of them and loving homes for those dogs. It's mm -hmm. our understanding that during this critical development period of a puppy, being in a steel cage probably isn't the best for it. And so we have the resources to tonight put them in warm, caring homes. And at that point, Your Honor. Well, let me ask you a question. I assume then since this matter is not a fully and finally resolved, you're talking about a dog using some sort of foster homes? A home for Interim spot. homes where the, the people homes. don't really own the dog? Right. No, thank you. They, they, they foster all the time, Your Honor. Well, I understand that, but we're, but we're not going to do that. I assume that uh, if there are any of these animals are sick, that they are properly looked after, that there is veterinary care available. Can I respond to that, Your Honor? Utilized. The Animal mm -hmm. Foundation is, a, is the only organization. It's a nonprofit, mm -hmm. non-taxpayer funded, mm -hmm organization mm -hmm. and for the record I'm not a tax paid lawyer either I understand, I understand that. you I understand that. <clears throat> this facility is is beyond impressive I went there um, Steve went there. my only question there is will they vets. my only question is will they receive veterinary there are care? six vets they are currently under the care of, of vets thank you uh, uh, that motion is denied you may renew it if you wish at the next hearing if there is one Yes. Your Honor, I appreciate all the words you said, and thank you for them. I only have one question, it, 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 that is, will you prepare the order so we don't have to argue over it? No. Okay, thank no. You. I have another question. You all will get together, that is, at least these three attorneys, or any others if, they, if, you, if you need them to, you will do so immediately. If you cannot do so immediately, please advise me, and I will bring you in to my chambers where you will sit until you have this done. The matter of simply wording of the preliminary injunction should not be a matter to 
uh, that, that, they, that these parties and these good attorneys uh, should have any problem sitting down and crafting together. Can yes. I make a request? And yes. you're likely going to decline it, but um, you, you did um, you you hit the nail on the head. Part of the issue with settlement is the the media attention mm -hmm. and the negative implications towards my client. Mm -hmm. And I would request a gag order on counsel because part of the problem are some of the statements <clears throat> that have been made that this is a money grab, which is completely factually inaccurate. Mm -hmm. um, so I would be, I would stipulate to not speak to the press. Okay. And I would ask that Mr. Hefter refrain from speaking to the press. He has appeared is on- there, Is there any objection to a gag order? At this point, what's there to talk about to the press? I mean- So I gather there's no objection then? That's not, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. The gag order will be part of the uh, preliminary injunction, you all may, since you're all in agreement, you all may agree to the terms, the specific terms of the gag order. All right. Now, just, just the, bond the, will, the bond will not be increased during this period of time. I fully expect that before the 45 days is over, I will be notified by everyone that this matter's been resolved, including what happens to the uh, $8,000, which has been uh, posted. <clears throat> and therefore, I, I'm not going to increase it at this time. I am doing everything I can <clears throat> to incentivize the rapid resolution of the matter. And therefore, I'm not going to increase the amount of the bond. Yes, ma'am. I was going to ask if it was possible to, to um find out if there was a judge available today, this afternoon, since we're all here. Certainly. Uh, Department 30 does that. Okay. We'll uh, judge judge Weiss uh, uh, does our settlement program. Uh, they are very responsive, very quick to resolve matters, especially uh, when we have matters where there is some, some real uh, reason to uh, act quickly. I would uh, expect you'll be able to find a judge very rapidly who will be able to accommodate you. Any other questions? Thank you all. Court is adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor.